The lumbar paraspinals are particularly important because of their attachments points from the iliac crest coming up to the ribs. And when they shorten and tighten, what they tend to do is increase the curve of the, the lordotic curve of the lumbar spine. This is incredibly important in cases where there's an associated tight psoas, because if you just treat the, these muscles in the paraspinals, the psoas can shorten and tighten and increase also that curve. So we need to treat both the psoas and the lumbar paraspinals at the same time in the same treatment, very important. Now, in addition to the north-south fibers, we have diagonal fibers for the multifidi and rotatories. Again, incredibly important for segmental mobility in this particular area. So I find it very important to spray the longer fibers, then to spray the shorter fibers in order to get the best results. Now, this is also a part of what Yanda used to call the lower cross syndrome, where you had the shortening and tightening of the lumbar paraspinals and the shortening and tightening of the iliopsoas muscles. So it's important to treat those together for that particular type of a problem. One other thing that happens with new graduates, new therapists, whatever they may be, is to remember there are a number of names by which these can be called. They might be just called the erector sphenae, they might be called the paraspinals, they might be called superficial and deep paraspinals, they might be called transversospinalis, referring just to the shorter ones. If you're having a problem, look in a number of books under a number of different names. Now, some postural clues that you might have a problem here might be an anterior tilt to the pelvis. This oftentimes happens, again, with an, when you have them shortening in context, in the context of the psoas and the rectus femoris and the tensor fascia lata. Now, another thing that might possibly happen if you see a person standing and their belly is forward and their shoulders are coming back, so they're walking, leaned back. Again, another case where those lumbar paraspinals need a little bit of work. Different diagnoses that you're going to find here, any kind of radicular pain going down the lower extremities, you're going to want to treat your lumbar paraspinals. That's going to be important. Any kind of a lumbar sprain, strain, disc type problems, these are all the kind of diagnoses that you see with the lumbar paraspinals. Let's go treat them. The pain pattern for the long paraspinals tends to be along the outside, just, just away from the spinous processes area here. Oftentimes, uh, at about the midline here, going down, above that area, they can come up a little bit. And so what we want to do in order to test this, we want to look for flattening along the spinous processes. So go ahead and reach down and touch your toes. I want you to drop the head down. Good. Make sure the head always drops down when doing this. And then if we start up around C7, just start running the hands over, looking for an area of flattening. Now she's rounding somewhat here and then flattens from about here to here. And we're rounding here, flattening from here down to about, right about here. That's where the flattening ends. And then we're okay through here. And then we do a deep flattening at the bottom. So what I'm going to want to do Here's the bottom of the ribs. I'm going to be spraying from here down. Now, the importance of spraying the lumbar paraspinals is amazing. If we have an increase in lumbar lordosis, oftentimes they're shortened and tightened. Also, on the, on the front, the psoas is shortened and tightened. If you release one and not the other, you can actually increase the lumbar lordosis instead of decreasing it. So this would be a very important part. Also, it's incredibly important to spray both long and short paraspinals whenever there's an extremity pain. In fact, if you locate the dermatome uh, containing the pain, isolate that portion of the spine, and that area will generally palpate as tender, and it will flat be flattened. Spray that area, and then you will get an increase in range of motion in the periphery, and it'll be easier to take care of that other pain pattern. So we can't emphasize enough the importance of paraspinals. Now, in order to do the stretching, we have her in a long sitting position. I'll be taking out the spray and holding up towards the top. And what I'm going to do is spray from here down. Now, some people like to spray the entire area. That's not a bad thing, but I like to spray over the individual segments. So I'm going to be spraying from about here down to get everything. Now, take a deep breath in, please. 
and exhale, and I am spraying right down the spinous processes to begin with. Okay? And deep breath in again. And exhale. Now I'm spraying just lateral. Again, deep breath in again. And exhale. And I'm going to go to the opposite side of the spine, do the same thing, just lateral. Okay? Also, notice I'm getting down all the way through the buttocks with the spray. That's because the referred pain pattern can go down that far. Deep breath in again, and exhale. Now I'm getting just out on the edge of that paraspinal area. And again, deep breath in, and exhale. Very good. Okay, following that work, I'm gonna to want to go ahead and put some heat on that area, but we'll let her come back up and not be stuck down there. And again, we want to heat the area until it does warm up because we wouldn't want to get the area too cold. And this is incredibly important, especially during the winter time, because when people leave the office and they go to sit in a cold car, as soon as they sit down, their shirt comes up out of their pants and they expose the area to cold again, and oftentimes that will uh, get that area to be tightened up. So that does the long paraspinals. Now, the short paraspinals, we're going to do in this same position, except maybe a little towards the end of the table. So let's head, head, set down at the edge there. And in order to differentiate, what we're gonna do is I said before we were spraying from here down, we're gonna do the same thing. But in order to do that, I'm gonna turn her head to the side and drop it, bring her arm across, and then I'm gonna just lightly press through here want to make sure that I've got room to actually come across. And what I'm doing is spraying from spinous process to transverse process all the way down. So go ahead and take in a deep breath for me. And exhale. There we go. And deep breath again. And exhale. And deep breath again. And exhale. And one more. Deep breath in. And exhale. Good. Okay, and now in order to spray the other side, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually support her arm here and let her drop her head. And I can go ahead and spray. So this way I can do everything from one side. I'll be spraying here diagonally from the spinous to the transverse process. Deep breath in. And exhale. And deep breath in. And exhale. Deep breath in, and exhale, and one more time, deep breath in, and exhale. Again, taking her back afterwards out of the movement, there we go. Okay, then we'll lean forward so we can put some heat on the area. There we go. Let me get my heating pad. There we go. Make sure we warm the area up very well after we do this. And you can go ahead and sit back up while we do that. And that should do a really nice job of relaxing everything else. And it should help with any range of motion restrictions anywhere in the lower extremities by getting that pressure off at the spinal level. So it's a really helpful thing to be able to do. There we go. And we'll have you lean down to touch the toes. This is a nice stretch that she can do while she's at work. And she can come back up. The other thing she can do while she's at work is she can twist in her chair and look behind her, and that'll stretch out one side of the deeper pair of spinals. Come back to the midline. We want to stop for a second and then turn to the opposite side. So that way we get both aspects of it. That's something that should be done on an hourly basis. And bring her back. The other thing that's interesting with that hourly basis, if we have pain in the extremities, make sure that we stretch that area of the paraspinals also that innervates that spinal section. 